Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. All right, you guys, when we left off in the last video, um, I had gotten the top glued on the body blank, at least the perimeter shape of the neck cut. I got my headstock somewhat sorted. We need to go back to the spindle sander with this, which we're about to do. I've already kind of announced that I'm going to be doing a sweet tea version of a super strat with the tunematic bridge. I've had a couple of thoughts about this. Number one, I don't want it to necessarily be shaped like a strat. Another thing I have thought about doing is instead of cutting the brake angle into the neck heel like I did on the figure eight build, I'm thinking about recessing the inserts for the tunematic bridge from Sophia that I have. I haven't completely decided this yet. I'm just toying around with the idea. What I need to do right now is fire up the spindle sander work out this area right here at the nut, get that down to that 43 millimeters I'm after, and we need to sand in the perimeter of our headstock shape. Now, I've got the shape drawn on there. However, looking at the figure eight neck, that is ultimately the same headstock. If you'll notice, it's got that little S hook in it right there. I like this headstock a lot. I mean, honestly, it looks pretty good. I just feel like it could use to be a little bit wider up in this area, which is also going to make it easier on me when I go to drill these tuners closer to the edge to make certain that I've got plenty of room between the hole and the outside edge of my headstock shape. So I may stay off that line I've got drawn there a little and leave this headstock slightly larger, at least on this end than the figure eight build is. Um, what we want to do right now is we want to get this transition finalized where it goes from our neck taper up into this transition where it goes up into the points of the headstock. And I also need to do some work back here for my volute. Now I'm going to do ultimately the same volute on this neck that I did on the figure eight but I think I'll make this one slightly more pronounced. I have left this headstock at about 13.2 millimeters. It's thicker than it has to be if I'm planning on gluing a cap on this thing. Looking at how that grain is doing on that paduke, where the grain is terminating into that purple heart in the center, and the fact that I've got that purple heart tapered, I think that creates a pretty cool look on the headstock already. I don't know that I'm even going to put a cap on this thing. In a situation like this where I'm using so many different kinds of wood on the same guitar, I want to showcase that wood really. So I don't necessarily need the flame maple cap on this thing to make this guitar appear homogenous. I think that's going to have a lot to do with what I do with color on that flame maple top on the body. We'll discuss that more as we get closer to that point as well. I absolutely want to do a linear fade. The question is, do I do a burst around the outside edge with some black or some purple? Or do I leave it translucent or transparent all the way over the whole body? Do that stain before my bevel carve so I can create some wood reveal in the bevel as I go around the outside edge of that guitar. For now, let's get this neck done. So I'm outside that line and I think I like that a little better with a little bit more meat left up in this area. We'll have to see what it looks like once I get the volute carved in. Everything looks pretty symmetrical at this point. I'm not unhappy with that. And perspective-wise, we're still good. I mean, you guys can see. 
the message that the great guitar build off should be sending to all of us it is a message of sharing and brotherhood i want to give back to the community for what the community does for me and that's kind of what i do here we learn from each other and we give back by teaching those same methods whether or not we're trying to do that or not we got a lot of people viewing these videos that are trying to pick up tips on how to build a guitar so I like to cater my videos to those people. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Anyway, I just wanted to stop and talk to you guys for a minute about that. Let's get going. So I'm pretty happy. Let's take a measurement. And I just want a ruler measurement at this point. I'm not going to break out the caliper. I'm at 44 millimeters wide on my nut line. I am not going that last half a millimeter on each side with the spindle sander, though. I'll do that by hand. Um, the first thing I want to do at this point, though, is clamp my neck down and start working on this volute. So I'm just going to take the Iwasaki and start removing some of this material, mainly off of this hump right here, and start working on that transition. I want to leave myself... A little bit of a ridge as I approach the two outer points on the headstock. I think that gives you a little bit more rigidity, even though I don't think that's going to be an issue on this particular build. In general, I think it's, you know, sound practice. I seriously need a haircut, you guys. I've got my headstock sorted. We got our volute started. Um, I really love that. I think it's going to turn out so killer. We need to cut the end of this neck off, and I'm going to cut this slightly beyond the 22nd fret. That's going to leave me about two and a half inches of neck pocket bottom, which, according to Ben Crow, should be fine. Let me turn the vacuum on and we're just going to cut it off. That'll make our decision for us. I won't even have to think about it anymore. Nice big hunk of Paduke and Purple Heart. I can make a few killer file handles or something like that out of this. I will absolutely save this. I save all my scraps anyway. So I'm going to use the Shinto, got it on the fine side for now, and I'm just going to file it up to this line. Little bit more. Now, let's get our chisel, let's mark out a line first. And let's notch this out so that truss rod can drop down in there. There we go. Nice and snug. I'm below the surface slightly. And I'm beyond the end of my neck cut. We're in progress mode, you guys. We really are. I know I look like a complete hippie. Maybe I am one. Let's cut this fretboard out. All right, that's better. Back to normal. That bandana is making me feel like a Sasquatch. All right, so here's how our fretboard's going on the neck. Like this. Taper, the taper running up. I thought it would look pretty cool. I'm going to do some type of treatment on the end of this fretboard for my truss rod access, like I did on the figure eight build, but I don't think I'm going to use that oval hole. 
I think I'm actually going to notch the end of this fretboard, do some type of either a bevel, a slanted bevel treatment in that notch. I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking I'm going to do like a square notch at the end of this fretboard. What we need to do next, I need to get my fretboard filed until I'm at my back nut line and make absolutely certain that that's straight. Let's get that done. Once I get close to this line, I'll switch over to a more gentle tool. I'm using the fine side of the Shinto, and I'm just letting the Shinto do the work. All right, let's take our crimson leveling beam right here. I got 80 grit sandpaper on this thing. I save my line. I've still got my nut line on the side. I need to reestablish my center. But what I need to do before that, I need to figure out where exactly I want to cut this fretboard off at. I need to clean that slot up a little. I got my Grobe half round file right here. I love those little Inox, those Grobe Inox files. Those things are just great. There we go. That is really, really nice. I'm happy with that. All we really need to do is reestablish our center line on our neck real quick. And while we're doing this, we'll go ahead and mark out for our nut width. I want to make certain that my 22nd fret is actually over wood. I'll make a preliminary nut line. And then we're going to establish our 43 millimeter nut width. We're also going to reestablish our center line. All right, there's that. We need to draw a line where we plan to cut this fretboard off. I am going to cut it off at the 24th fret line, which I've already got drawn on there. It's this far outside line here. Um, that's going to give us that much overhang on the fretboard for me to do some kind of little funky treatment or whatever. Let's get this fretboard cut first of all. And again, I'm going to go beyond the line. But I'm going to try to get a little closer to it than I did earlier. There we go. I saved the line. All right. If you'll look how close my purple heart line is, or the outside veneer line is to the 43 millimeter nut line on the rear of this fretboard here. And compare that to how close we are down here. That's another factor that I had to take into consideration to keep those distances from being vastly different. If they're a little off, I'm okay with that. I would rather them be dead on. Shall I slot this fretboard first or shall I do the notch in the end? I think I should slot the fretboard first. I want to get out my LMI fret slotting jig. I'm going to screw the jig to the table. We're nice and solid. All right, now what I need to do is copy our center line over to the sides of the fretboard so we've got a reference when we go to tape this down in between does not count when it comes to a fretboard you really need to be um, as accurate as you are capable of being and as accurate as the tools you have will allow you to be in this case i got a fret slotting jig that does not change it's a constant it's got a hardened steel pin in it I've got an undamaged fret slotting template with slots cut in it that were done by a laser. It's as accurate as we can expect it to be. Yeah, let's take our brass weight, burnish the tape down. Now we need some tape on the back of our fretboard, but I do not want to cover up the very end. We just want enough to hold this thing. I will not use any activator. I need those couple of extra seconds. I don't need much super glue either, just enough to hold it. I've cut a few slots already. I just didn't want to jinx it by hit and go on the camera before I had a, an opportunity to cut a couple.
and I'm letting the blade do the work. I'm not putting any downward pressure on it. I'm also basically marking the slots with the saw. Um, I am not really trying to get these to depth right now. And last one, 22. There we go, you guys, a slotted fretboard. So let's measure the width of our truss rod nut. At its widest point, it looks like it is about 18 and a half millimeters, we'll say 19, and then room for slop, let's say 21 millimeters. 10 and a half millimeters on either side of the center line is where we need our notch. We're at about 10 and a half millimeters from the end of the fretboard. There's my notch that I need to cut on the end of the fretboard, right there. So I need to file out that gap right there. We got a square cut in at least. We're gonna get this fretboard clamped to our neck, lined up on our center line. All right, that looks pretty dang good. We're gonna make absolutely certain we're right before we do this though. Right, let's get these holes drilled and get ourselves some locator pins put in here. Super glue. All right, this time instead of not taping the truss rod, I'm going to tape the truss rod. I've got some half inch masking tape right here. All right, let's do it. All right, tape off. Now we'll slide the fretboard straight down on these toothpicks. I'm alternating sides so it will sit square or sit flat, you know, without rocking or whatever. Just makes us a little makes it a little easier. Plus I'm going down the fretboard like I always do from one end to the other. All right, you guys, we got our fretboard glued to the neck. Um, I've got good squeeze out all the way down. As you can see, I've got some cleanup to do now, but that's fine. That's the shape that I decided to go at the end of the fretboard. That's the shape I decided to go with. We're about to flush cut this thing on the router table. Once I get done with this, we're going to flatten this fretboard out. Then we'll pull our body blank up here and start laying out some distances and things like that and figuring out where we want our bridge. Let's get this fretboard flush cut. Let me turn the vacuum on. I'm going to go slow. Put my glasses on. All right, you guys, here's our neck. It's starting to look like a guitar neck now. I did not cut that with the router. I did not want to take a chance on getting up into my transition area right here. So I'll catch that with a chisel. Um, I'll do the same thing down on this side. I did not want to take a chance on messing my geometry up on the sides of the fretboard right there. Let's get some sanding blocks and clean up the sides of this neck. 80, 180, and 240. This is my little Dura block that I've cut in half and made a half size block out of. And this has got 80 grit on it. 
and I'm not too worried about getting it completely clean. We've got so much sanding left to do that I'm not really that worried about it. All right. There we go. We'll go back and catch the sides of that with the finer grit paper here shortly. I've got my my ticonderoga first pencil <laughs> it's like a kindergartner's pencil but it's got a really fat lead on it now let's draw this fretboard up all right let's take our crimson leveling beam i've got 80 grit on this side 180 on this side very little pressure i just want to find out if we're flat or not we got a low spot back here, and I got a low spot right here. So we need to just keep on working. And I'm avoiding the end of the fretboard for now because I don't want to take a chance on sanding a fall away into it. All right, that's got that dip right there. Now we just got a little bit left right here on this side. Now I'll take some full length strokes down this thing. All right, we're gonna draw it up one more time. All my pencil marks are gone. I'm gonna switch over to the 180 side and we'll do the same thing. Very little pressure. And I'm taking pencil marks all the way down Make sure we're nice and flat. Now I'm gonna get out the straight edge. We're in good shape, you guys. I really like it. I'm gonna go over this fretboard with this 180 on this hard block right here. Get rid of those 80 grit scratches. Again, we're going to carry this up to about 2,500 grit. All right, let's go to 240. Very little pressure. We're already starting to get a sheen on the fretboard. I got tons of work left to do on this neck, you guys. For now, what we need to focus on is what we're doing to get this neck attached to the body. Um, I will carve this neck pretty much. I'll get the facets cut in it at least before it gets glued to the body. I will finalize the neck shape and absolutely finalize the hill transition once we get this neck glued in so I can homogenize that shape and where the body and the neck meet. I want that to look really fluid and smooth. But as it stands right now, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. I, I really love Paduke, Paduke and Purple Hearts even better. And now Paduke, Purple Heart, and Ebony. That's, uh, you know, that's a hard combination to beat right there. That's just beautiful. Um, it's turned out that it's really heavy, and I knew that. But we've got so much routing left to do on the body. I'm not really concerned about weight. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, which I've already said this earlier. If it turns out like what I'm seeing in my head and it meets the quality standards that I set forth for myself here, I very well may donate this guitar to the Great Guitar Build Off. If they choose to sell it, that's fine. Or if they want to give it to someone in need, that would be cool too. Anyway, we'll talk more about it. I need to talk to Ben and find out what his feelings are about this. And I also need to make the decision if I'm going to do that. Um, but I'm thinking seriously about it. So stay tuned, you guys. It'll hurt me, but I think I'll do it. All right, you guys, let's get our body blank up here and get some figuring done. You, you guys know what's about to happen. <laughs> I will not be doing the same thing on this body or on the neck or anything that I did on the figure eight build. It's gonna be completely different. 
this guitar will begin its life as a strat. Let's draw this shape around this template. Even though I know it's going to change, I just want to reference. That's our scale length line if I hold myself true to this template. But I don't think I will. So I'm not going to mark the scale length with this template. Never pull straight up on these templates. You gotta kinda pry them up off these pins because you take a chance on snapping the tabs off of these things, which is the biggest advantage to the Maximum Guitar Works templates. That's basically placed. So what we wanna do now is let's take our flexible ruler and find out where our scale length's gonna fall with the neck at that location. That's 25 and a half right there, right there. So there's our scale length line. Now let's see how close that is to the body template. It's pretty much dead on it. I just don't want it looking wonky. But let's grab the Sophia and we need several things from this anyway. So this is the Sophia 344 tremolo, I mean a uh, bridge. Let's make sure these holes in the Maximum Guitar Works template set align with the holes on the Sophia. It's either going to be the front ones or the back ones. So we're going to choose to use the front holes because that's where the magic happens. That's where our saddle intonation points at. These back holes are not as important that they match this template as the front ones are. So we will use these front holes. So let's mark those on the body just so we've got a reference to place this thing. Now this is not going to be for alignment. So I'm not going to mark them heavily. I just want two little pin pricks. So our Sophia is going to sit just like that. What a cool bridge that is, you know? Okay, so what that means is if we use the Sophia, our scale length line is going to back up a little. We want it in the center of the saddle's travel, so I can pretty much see where that is. Let's put our neck back. This time we will mark where the front of our neck pocket is going to be. And I'm going to switch over to millimeter adjust uh, measurements this time too. I want a 648 millimeter measurement. And obviously we won't solidify this line until after we've got the neck glued to the body. There's our scale length. The Sophia has got a little V-shaped point on the saddle. That is the intonation point. And it makes it very easy to measure this. It is exactly 13 millimeters at the center of this bridge. So 13 millimeters plus one. It's probably more like 1.2. I don't have to have string throughs on the back of this thing. The, this is a locking saddle. It strings from the back of the saddle. There's little Allen grub screws right here that lock that string to the saddle. Then you've got your point, your intonation point, right up at the front of that thing. As you can see, they each have individual height adjustment screws. And you can set your intonation right here underneath there. This bridge is a marvel of modern engineering. All right, 14.2 millimeters. That's pretty much what I needed. So we can move the body blank to the side momentarily. I also marked the front of my neck right here with the neck in its current situation. But look at that top, you guys. Is that thing not wicked? I don't want the adjustability that I've got on the Godot because this is a four point bridge. And if I have to have it raised way high up off the body, 
I think it's going to look kind of weird. That made me consider recessing this bridge down into the body and not doing a break angle. If I made a recess template using this bridge as the guide so this bridge could recess down into the front of the body, not only do I think that would look really awesome, it would eliminate the need for a brake angle. I've done a little thinking um, and I have decided that I am going to recess this bridge down inside this body. Uh, I'm still going to cut this neck pocket the way I did in the figure eight build. I'm just not going to have a brake angle on the neck. What we need to do right now is figure out how thick we need this neck heel to be and still have adequate neck pocket bottom thickness to be able to support this neck stably and to make sure we don't have any issues throughout the life of this instrument. Here's what I've decided I'm going to do and I'll pan down and let you guys check this out. So I've already made a mark on this center line that I've got right here. You can see that little hash mark I've got right here. That's my depth. So how I've come up with that, I took my ruler and I measured 15 millimeters from the bottom of our body blank and I made myself a line right there. So that's going to assure me that I have 15 millimeters of solid wood below this neck heel. I think that's plenty. Is probably even a little more than I actually require. That gives me 33 millimeters above that, and that is to the surface of this top. All right, so if I take our neck and I measure down from the bottom of the fretboard, and we won't go quite as deep as that was, we'll make sure we leave ourselves a little playroom. So I'm going to go to 34 millimeters we'll do the same thing on this side and i'll mark it in two places so we can get us a line drawn and we're going to flatten this up with the plane so i'm not necessarily worried about it being perfect we need to take this neck blank over to the bandsaw and cut that residual off and get this flattened up on the bottom of this heel then we can lay this out, mark out exactly where our neck pocket's going to be, and we can start thinking about getting the template put together for this. I want to make absolutely certain that I am releasing videos that teach these processes adequately so you guys can learn from this, or the guys that need to learn from this. And I hope at the same time, that everyone can find some entertainment value or some educational value from my videos. You guys already know that's what I'm all about here. That and spread my message of peace and love, of course. Anyway, let's get this thing over to the bandsaw and get this excess wood cut off the bottom of this heel. I'm going to hold this as flat as I possibly can and I want to save the line. Now what we can do is I'll clamp my neck down to the tabletop. We'll take our number four hand plane and get this flat. And once I'm decently sure that I'm flat, I'll start to measure that distance on both sides with the caliper at four points to make sure that I'm absolutely parallel to the fretboard. Cause that's the goal here. So let's get that done. I'm going to grab my number four over here and we'll go this direction to see what what we get going on on the grain. And we'll run the caliper straight down the side of the neck on both sides. I'm a little higher on this side and that's fine. It's very little. We'll take this sanding block with the 80 grit on it. All right, we're a little higher on the back. We're dangerously close. All right, now I'm gonna take my scraper and clean this up. 
we're in good shape. A little sanding, and we're going to be all right. We'll switch over to our 180. And I don't really think we need to go any further than that. So we're flat. I've got this flat. We're within 0.03 millimeters on all four corners of this neck heel. So really close. So I've got our center line drawn on the fretboard. We need to place this neck heel on our body blank. I've cut some pieces of maple out of these strips right here. Now I'm going to route this neck pocket about one and a half to two millimeters shy of what I actually think it should be. The reason being, once I get this neck pocket cut to within a millimeter and a half, two millimeters, I'll be able to slide my neck down in that neck pocket, lay a ruler on the vertical across this fretboard, check my distance right off the end of the fretboard, and then again at the end of the body. What that's going to allow me to determine is if my fretboard is completely, perfectly parallel to the top on the body. That's going to come into play later when we start trying to adjust our action. Now is the time to determine how straight we are this way. We'll also work out issues with our neck running parallel to the center line. I've taken my Crimson Protractor and I've laid it down here with my zero point here and on the back of the angle side of the Protractor. I've lined that up on that joint line which is my center line and I have made a perpendicular line where I want the front of my neck heel to fall. Now what we need to do is we need to get us get ourselves adjusted this way. So I've got a center line tick drawn on the front of my neck heel right here. I want to get my neck propped up here so there's no rock or anything like that. We're going to move it up to that line that we drew with the protractor. I'm going to lay myself a light down here. I'm going to run this ruler down that center line, basically the whole length of this neck right there. And we want this as close as we can possibly get. I'm going to clamp that down in a central location. It doesn't have to be dead center, but we want it to be, um, you know, close. We're going to get our square right here, a little machinist square. And we're going to line that up so we're right on that center line. I want to double check my center line on my neck to my body. We're right on that center line. And I can already tell the whole neck's going to have to go that way. So I'm going to put my finger right here and I'm just going to pull this this direction a little and that becomes the pivot point at that point we still may have to adjust the heel back and forth but that will keep us somewhat stable at least now we'll pull the square away we want to recheck where our center is lined up at so with our neck right there at that location We've got the front of the heel lined up with the perpendicular line that we made to the center line where we want the front of our neck heel to be. We're centered side to side this way. We're proper where our neck's placed back and forth or fore and aft. So we can't really ask for it to be much better than this. We're going to place one of these wood strips that I've cut here up against this side of the neck. Um, I do not want to move that neck. We'll double check everything before we go any further. Burnished. Let's put a little super glue down on the strip of tape that's on the body. This is my jointed edge right here. 
So I want it, I want to double check and make sure I'm in the location that I want to be in. We'll check one more time to make sure I have it bumped this while I wasn't looking. We look really good. So let's hit that with a little activator. Make sure you're putting the jointed side of this of your wood up against the neck. And in this case, I think both sides have been jointed. I want it to be just like that. All right, no gap. I'm good. Let's make sure I didn't move anything. I have it. Now, <clears throat> while my neck is laid out like this, I want to do this side too. Now I can put a little pressure when I go to put this piece of board down up against this side to make sure I get a nice tight fit. <clears throat> we'll take a piece of tape, same thing. Put it on our body. And you don't have to cram it right up against the neck. You just want to get it close enough to where you don't risk gluing the piece of wood to your body. That's all we're after. Burnish it. We want to put a piece of tape on this piece of wood right here. And again, both sides of this have been jointed, but I want to make sure I don't have any old dips or divots or anything. We want to use this side again with the super glue. You don't need much. We're only wanting to hold it stable while we route our neck pocket. Little activator. Again, don't go all the way to the end. We're going to press up against this, but not so hard that we move it. There we go. I could pull my neck off of here at this point, but I'm not going to because I want exact control over where I place this end piece right here. We can, however, take the ruler off so we can see a little better. All right, there we go. Now, I want this neck placed exactly where I want it to be. I want to put some super glue down on here. My neck is forward as far as I want it to be, so we're fine. A little activator. Put our jointed side up against this neck. We want a nice snug fit here too. We can pop this neck out just like that. We're going to line the inside of this with two layers this time of this vinyl tape. And as a matter of fact, let's use one layer of paper with vinyl on top of that and see if we get any better results. Because the router bit the last time, it chewed that vinyl it chewed it up pretty bad. Okay, we'll burnish that down and then we'll go around the inside of this cavity one more time with this vinyl tape. What we need to do at this point is fire up the vacuum and hog this out. Now, if you guys will remember earlier in the video, we've already made ourselves a mark right here where we want to go on our depth. What we need to do first is let's get over here to the drill press and get our depth set. All we need to do is start hogging out material. Now I'll have to catch the area up against the end of the neck heel. I'll have to do with the hand drill. Um, since I put this drill press table on my drill press, my body won't go back. I lost about an inch of travel towards the drill press pillar. Let me turn the vacuum on. Let's get this neck pocket cut. I'm excited. I love this part. I'm gonna take my 16 millimeter Narex chisel and I'm gonna clean up these corners right here. All right, you guys, sorry my camera ran out of battery and I wasn't paying attention. 
So there we go. I would call that a tight neck pocket. All I want to do now is mark out the end of this truss rod nut so I can notch, notch out for it. Now we'll cut that with the chisel. All right. We got a nice tight neck pocket, which is where I wanted to be. So we're flat on the bottom, just as a preliminary check. I wanna see where we are here. Oh, we are looking so good, you guys. Well, we know we're good now. I'm gonna take this neck out of this pocket and we'll set it over here. Um, let's recap real quick what we've gotten done in this video. It's quite a lot of work. So we got the fretboard slotted. It's a 25 and a half inch scale neck, 22 frets. We got the fretboard glued to the neck. I got it flush cut with the sides. We got the fretboard end basically sorted like I want it to allow for the truss rod nut adjustment access. We got our heel cut and flattened. We got our volute started. We've got our headstock shape finalized. You know, the neck's pretty much in a state at this point that it's ready to get glued into the body. Once I get my fret markers installed and the side dots, we'll do some preliminary shaping before I glue this neck to the body. So I've still got the freedom to deal with this neck as a singular object before it gets mounted into the body. Um, we'll take care of the radiusing in the next video i don't know if we'll get to the preliminary shaping of the neck or not in the next video i've got lots of things i want to do to that thing so we'll figure that out as time goes by we also got our body blank basically dealt with we got our neck pocket cut i did say this guitar is going to start its life as a strat only because i want to be able to take full advantage of the Maximum Guitar Works templates that I have and the auto alignment system that Steve has built into those templates. That will allow me for flawless routes on my pickup cavities. I'll hammer those pins through to the back. We'll get our control cavity routed in the back. Eventually, I'm gonna cut this body shape out, but we need to do some design things to this guitar before I start cutting on it. And um, we're going to let the body sit for a little bit while I shift my focus back over to the neck. The next video is pretty much going to be fret marker, side dots, preliminary shaping, and radiusing of that neck. We'll get the tuner holes finalized and get those drilled in. I don't want to go too far on the shaping until I'm actually glued into the body because I want to make the heel transition up into the body, one homogeneous flowing shape. That's my plan, and we're gonna make it happen. Once we get to the finished part of this build, this thing's really gonna come to life. I'm really hopeful that I can get that linear fade to work out like what I'm seeing in my head. If I can, this guitar is gonna be a stunner, and I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's finished. I said that I do not know what I'm doing with this guitar. One of two things is gonna happen. I'm either gonna keep it or I'm gonna donate it to the great guitar build off. I fully trust Ben um, to make the right decision on what to do if I do wind up um, donating this guitar. And I don't have an issue with that. You know, those guys have been so killer to me. I would never doubt their intentions. I mean, it's Ben's whole thing to make this a charity, to help people that are a little bit less fortunate than we are get something going on in their life to inspire them to create. That is the number one reason why I am so on fire about the Great Guitar Build-Off. It's not just about everything that you can learn by participating in this contest. It's not just about the camaraderie that we all have as the brotherhood of builders that have built up around this thing. 
it's not just about the information that we all share that improves all of us as guitar makers. Um, it's not just about the charity part of this. It's about all of those things as a whole coming together for the benefit of mankind. <laughs> this is beneficial and I can tell you from a personal view and from personal experience, building a guitar for yourself, if you're a guitar player or if you're a maker of things, if you allow it to happen, it has the ability to change your life. And I'm not just saying that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, you guys. It, it's, it's, it's about more than what you're making. It's about what it does for you internally. It's about creating something with your hands that most people either won't try to do because they're either not into it or they may not think they're capable. But I'm telling you right now, if you're into this kind of thing, making a guitar, it'll change your life. It brings so much positivity and it gets your creative fire, um, that internal fire that most people who create things feel already. But this has just like exploded inside of me. I have got so many ideas going on in my head right now and I have had since I got into this. What I'm doing right now is learning every little thing that I can about guitar building. That's another reason why I'm so into the great guitar build off because so many people involved in this thing are utilizing so many different methods, so many different ideas, and every single one of them is fueled by creative passion, which is awesome. I love that. There's so much to be learned here. And you can walk away from the end of every great guitar build off with so much more knowledge than you started with. That's what I'm doing. You know, I want to learn how to be a kick ass guitar builder. And all you guys have helped me so much when it comes to that. Ben has helped me. I'll never be able to thank Ben enough for, for what he's done for me personally. You know, I, I'll never be able to give that up. You know, it's, this is what I do at this point. I love this so much. And I owe Ben Crow for that. I do. He's the one that inspired me to get into this. And he continuously inspires me to stay into this. So, Ben, thank you, man. I really appreciate everything that you've done for me. Not just what you've done for my channel and driving viewers to me and subscribers. Yes, I appreciate that. I absolutely do. You can't be a YouTuber without subscribers and viewers. But what I'm really so thankful for that you've done for me, brother, is you've given me focus and drive to be really, really great at something. I, man, thank you so much. Um, peace and love to you and your family. Thank you to all of you guys who watch my channel, who comment on my videos, all the subscribers to my channel. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it beyond what I'm able to express with words. If you're watching this channel for the first time, please consider hitting that subscribe button Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date as to where I'm at on all these builds I got going on in the shop right now. Drop me a few comments. Let me know what you think about uh, all my builds, the videos that I'm posting, what you think about the channel in general. I'm going to try to keep it as interesting as I possibly can, um, not just through the Great Guitar Build Off, but through all my builds in general. I really hope you guys will follow along. I hope you enjoy the content, and I hope you'll come back for the next episode of the Cloud9 build, which is my entry for the Great Guitar Build Off 2022. And until that time, you guys, peace and love.